Support for this show and all the others on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. Yes, you can use AI to make your job as a marketer easier. Let me introduce you to Momento, the newest marketing partner of the Marketing Podcast Network. Momento is built to put the power of AI in your hands. It writes social media captions. It does your transcript. It does so much stuff. and even finds moments, hence Momento, in your show that you can repurpose as audiograms and other great little videos and audio clips. Have it watch or listen to a podcast and suggest, then make automatically social media posts to promote the show. Heck, it can even listen to the podcast episode and write a poem if you want to use that in your company blog. It's AI after all. So go check it out. MPN listeners can try it free at bit.ly slash Momento MPN. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Momento MPN. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I am your host, as always, Seth. Um, today, I have Damian Jordan. And it's not spelled like Michael Jordan. It has an E instead of an A whatever side note there but damien is the brains behind finally with the ph which we'll get into what that is he is a highly motivated professional executive with over 15 years of combined experience in multi-million dollar client business and asset management which means he is an agent and helps helps people out and stuff like that it's a big words for saying one word good job damien good job anyhow um He's helped professional clients across the NFL, NBA, and the entertainment industries. He's worked with corporate CEOs. The guy's been around a bunch. And now he's launched Finally, which is a search engine for companies who don't really care if you smoke marijuana because it's technically legal in most spots. And Pennsylvania is coming along. But it's still it's a hassle. It's a hassle. For you apply to a job. They say, oh, you guys have you pee in a cup, whatever. But, oh, but we don't care about the marijuana part. But then you have to throw all the explanation that you take for medical reasons, all that stuff. They're just apply to the jobs that just don't screen for marijuana. It's easy. It's easy, easy, easy. So, Damien, welcome to the program, buddy. Did I pretty much sum you up that you're pretty much an agent? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, sports, <laughs> I, I did business, business management. So when I, Business when I worked, management. So what is business yeah. management? So uh, prior to starting, finally, I did sports management for about, 15 years. Uh, so I handled all the business management, marketing, public relations, and accounting for NFL players, NBA players. Oh, so you did more than just like gigs. Yeah, yeah I, I did more agree. than that. So I actually, I worked with the agents. So agents, they negotiate the contracts, work with the team. Oh, I, you're more important then. There you go. I was, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I, I'll say it. I'll say you do more than agents. There you go. Yeah, they, just get, they, hey, just get the, they just get the money to get you paid. So there you yeah, go. I, I help I help my keep keep my clients rich, you know. And, there you go. Um, you know, well, they, well, they keep them out, out of the media. Keep out of the rich people <laughs> out there. Athletes earn it. Yeah, like they earn it. I mean, the NFL guys, you know, I think them out of all of them, they put their bodies to a ringer. I mean, if they last, I mean, Tom Brady was lasted until he's forty. You know, is he back? I don't know if he's back or not. But no, he's, he's out. He's done. He's done. He's done. He's, done. he's, done. he's finally done. He's like, but like, you know, he's not, you know, Brett Favre, ugh, we don't like him that much, but whatever. Mm. But these guys put their bodies to the ringer, especially the offensive linemen, all that stuff. I mean, they're being the crap out of themselves. Mm-hmm. They deserve that money. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go into all politics, thing, but there's some, there's some billionaires that don't deserve it. <laughs> like <laughs> Musk, you know, that kind of thing, you know. But whatever, <laughs> whatever. We, we, diverge, we diverge. We diverge. So now right. you decided to open up finally, which yes. is PH no late. Why? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I put a little wine there finally. But yeah. PH kind of for Philadelphia kind of, because you know you're, you're Philadelphia mm-hmm. born and bred and that kind of thing. So yes. So we gotta put the PH in there. Also, finally, yeah. finally, if you split it normally, it wouldn't be as catchy, I don't think. 
it wouldn't be as catchy. And it's also for physicians as well, because we work with metal, medical physicians. Ooh, yeah. Never, so, never. you know, it's, it's um, you know, we really wanted to, to help medical marijuana patients and cannabis consumers really get career access with employers. So it's yeah. almost like a, a, a play on words, like finally, like finally, I don't have to stop consuming my medicine or worry about if I'm going to celebrate a, a bachelor party or a bachelorette party in Vegas. Yeah, you, you, go, you, go, yeah. you went to a good old place and you didn't partake, but I, I went to a Who concert when I was a junior in high school. Um, mm -hmm. you, let me just say I consumed without consuming. <laughs> I walked out. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right, over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. They are quite buzzed. Right. And that's the thing. So, I mean, like, it's good for people who even don't necessarily partake or like, this is icky. I mean, because I mean, a lot of these companies, I mean, if you say you take it for medical reasons, if you're in Pennsylvania or it's not illegal in, in Jersey or New York or any, pretty much anywhere else, it's pretty much, mm -hmm. that, it's pretty much pretty widespread there. I mean, I, I hear you walk into Times Square and it smells like one giant um, it's, song now. Yeah, so, they say it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But the, the thing is, is that it's just one less thing to have to explain and go through to get the job. Absolutely. And, and why not just like know that the business doesn't check for it, says they don't care, and they like you, and you can get the job and get rocking and rolling. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. PH. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic with a PH. That works. There you go. There you go. We like that. <laughs> we like that. I was like, yeah, it worked. Uh, kind of dorky, but anyhow. So, Damien, so how did this all get started? That you, I mean, how did you get, find your way managing marketing and all that stuff for the NFL players, NBA players? How did you find your way into that? I've always loved entrepreneurship. I started my first business when I was in college. It was a college magazine. It was uh, oh, six different girl. magazines wrapped in one. It was a Jet Vibe Source, InStyle, Essence, and Sports Illustrated. So I realized when I was in college that no one was reading the school newspaper. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, how about I just create a magazine where it'd be an opportunity to actually talk about student life, what's happening on our campus and other campuses, and decided to build that. And I wound up at the age of 21 going out. I got us a distribution deal. I got us a publishing deal. And then we actually had an opportunity to feature uh, Angela Simmons, who's oh. uh, Run's daughter from Run DMC on our cover. Oh, oh that's and, all. Um, that's all. Nothing big. Nothing big. Nothing big. At 21. So I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was excited to be doing something. That's the best way of and, doing things. A lot of yeah. entrepreneurs don't know what they're doing. That's probably one of the bad things about being an entrepreneur when you start out. You don't always know what you're doing. Right. It's, it's like you failing are... fast. It's mm. failing fast very quickly and then learning from it. And then just kind of just repeating it. And then, you know, you fail enough. Then you just like wake up and you're like, oh, failure doesn't really exist. So let me just kind of just keep pushing. I love wall. that right there. Failure does yeah. not necessarily exist. It makes you stronger. And honestly, it saves you time if you fail fast. Yeah. Um, oh, that idea didn't work. That sucked. Whatever. Let's move along. Yeah. Let's move along. And then from there, I actually became really good friends with Angela. She had a publicist. I didn't know anything about PR. And the next thing I started learning about public relations and I got to be around our management team. And next thing you know, I started getting my first clients. And this, I just started you know why they saw a kid who's hungry mm -hmm. and wants to learn and is yeah. moldable and isn't going to ask for a crap ton of money. <laughs> yeah. And it was all about relationships. And that yeah. was another thing that I learned in working in entertainment and then eventually migrating into sports. You know, it was kind of, I realized that everyone wanted to fit. And my thinking at the time was I can offer you pro bono services in the beginning. I can show you my ad value. Once you see my ad value, then you can compare it to someone that you're already paying. 
and then you can bring me uh, on, you know, for that salary. So, and, and that was the one of the biggest and things. And you were young. You were young. And I was you young. Yeah. You were young, oh, young yeah. stupid, able to do that stuff. You, you, you didn't have kids or family or anything to deal no. with, you know. You could live off of ramen and just kind of roll with it. Exactly. <laughs> just roll through it. Yeah, it was it was wonderful. But, you know, after doing that for so many years and, and working with so many different players and people, yeah. you know, so many experiences, you know, um, I really had a life event that kind of transitioned me from working in sports and entertainment into technology. Ooh. So, you know, yeah, in 2018, almost lost both of my parents in the same year, just oh. like a real, yeah, it was a crazy time, you know, just going through a lot. Um, you know, I was in a relationship and she had moved away and it just was going on. And oh, my so 2018 my, sucked. So 2018, 2018 sucked worse than 2021. But, 2020. but it was crazy. But, and this is, and this is the, one of the roller coasters about life, right? So it's not just like lows, because there's highs within those lows. Isn't that I mean, weird how that is? It's super weird. Because oh, it's so bugged. Yeah. The Eagles went to the Super Bowl. So it's like, I'm going through this mental, you know, depression, trying to deal with my family and my business and a career change. And then you got your favorite team. It's literally, you win in all these games on their path to the Super Bowl. So it was kind of like this juggling. And I went to the Super Bowl, you know, and it, it was just like this. Oh, you went to the was, game? Yeah, yeah. I went to the game. So it was like kind of mind blowing to, to you be. Need, you probably needed that after all that crap that was going on. Uh, like, yeah. All right, it's expensive, but let's just do it. That's just, <laughs> no, I got the free ticket. I was good. I was oh, good. I was good there. I was good there. Because you knew people. You knew people. I, I was good people. Hey, it, listen, relationships are everything. They're it is. Everything. Seriously. It's everything. Um, but where, yeah. Where so, was it that year? Where was it that year? Uh, Minnesota. Oh god! Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it was cold. Oh was god! Cold. It's indoors it's though, so it's it was going... indoors. Yeah, but everything indoors. outside isn't. <laughs> it was listen, and I couldn't find a plane ticket, so I had to drive seventeen hours. Yeah, well, for the, well, if it's a number for the Eagles, you do it. Yeah, it was worth. It was worth it. It was worth it. I've seen every piece of weather, so that's kind of you know one of the driving things that, there uh, just just alone <laughs> driving to the Super Bowl. You saw every piece of weather. Every every piece of weather. I seen the lake effect in Chicago, you know, I seen, you know, it was nice when we left here and, and when, I, when I left here in Philadelphia, then it you was get nice. the, the it was, it was mid forties. I remember mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't bad. And then I got Keeping there, it was blizzard snow. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was and, but the Eagles won. So I mean, it worth and it. We won. That made the drive home worth it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So we went to the, the Eagles, we went to the Super Bowl. Things obviously turned around. Yes. So essentially, um, I stopped, you know, I decided to um, transition from running my own uh, firm to maybe going off to work at like a larger sports firm. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's in more, that moment, more quote unquote stability. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 right. And it's, it's never like that. So, you know, because I do knew different people at some larger firms that I could go to. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go there. And then it hit me after my buddy had um had introduced his name is jelani he had introduced me to consuming marijuana so i started consuming marijuana for my mental health so now i'm feeling mm. great feeling better you know you know i had anxiety all these different things that was going on at the time yeah, that's just amazing it really it's is. uh yeah it, it, it really transformative man and then it healed you know so many other uh childhood traumas and just th different things that i didn't even know were there you know so i'm so grateful mm. for it and and in that moment you know, when I decided to apply for those larger positions, it hit me. It was like, well, am I going to have to stop consuming something that's helping me to go get this position? Not knowing if that company screens or not. And or, I remember or being, having to explain yourself. And all that or stuff. having to explain yourself. Yep. And being yeah. in college, I had a, a bunch of colleagues of mine. I remember because I didn't smoke. I was an athlete. So they would essentially stop consuming their medicine to go get a job. Um, you, you know, would, not would get your hair, you would get your haircut. You would haircut, get a haircut. And you wait, I remember six weeks. Not that I took any or anything. Well, okay, okay, yeah, okay. No, 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 no. I had fun in college, but I'm saying, but like, you used to like say, all right, I have to wait, like, I think it was like six weeks and a haircut, and you're good, supposedly. Yeah, or consuming all types of like these detoxification oh, things. Oh, yeah, they never were. They you, never you know, were. It was, I, I just remember saying to myself, like, man, like, it, it's a shame that these people have to go through all these different things. And especially when it's legal in almost every place, it's, place. It's, it's legal, 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 yeah. like legal, legal, like you can just go to the store and pick it up kind of thing. Right. Over 21, right. but it's like going to the beer store pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's yeah. going to get there. I mean, if Fetterman has anything to say about it, it's going to get there. <laughs> it's going to get there. Gone, but, you know. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense. And yeah, and it's Eagles green, which I love. Okay, yeah, yeah, Eagles green. We love the green. Um, go soft on the green, and uh, it, it, you know, once I learned that that was the first problem with the, you know, the big opportunity yeah. was that you know people were not trying to stop consuming their medicine to go get this job. Another issue was that employers weren't making it transparent if they were screening versus if they weren't screening. So what was yeah. happening was, you know, people were can, you know, people would stop consuming marijuana to go get a job, you know, only to get, you know, offered the position and, and, have to and be then, up. <laughs> and then have to pee in a cup. And then what was interesting was you had companies who would essentially uh, stop, uh, marijuana screening on their panel and then next thing you know you may not show up to the the drug screening under the assumption that marijuana is on the panel and now you lose out and the employer loses out and they, just yeah. off of it. and they didn't even screen from it screen for it from the beginning so you know it's, it's definitely simple. it's so simple to say you don't screen for it yeah you know? yeah that's it and the, the thing is you know I, I think with the, the the stigma of marijuana and people thinking that people are going to be showing up to work high, which is like the craziest thing ever, because, you know, I always tell people, you know, there's a drug free workplace act of 1988, which says you don't show up to work drunk, you don't show up to work high. But the problems is there, you know, you got a group of people who are consuming uh, marijuana legally from medicinal. They think, recreational they think, chi, they think chi chin chong. Yeah, that's exactly what they think, which is, <laughs> which is a, which is, Which is you know, they did, they did more damage to the whole idea of weed. I mean, they're hilarious movies, Cheech and Chong. Right. But they did more damage to the the you know to the essence of you know marijuana because there's like there's marijuana that doesn't even get you high; it gets you to feel better. Right. There's different strains of this and all that. Like my right. mom is 74 years old and has CRPS, which is a pain mm. disorder. And she'll take you know a tincture of marijuana at night, and she can go. She can go to bed then. Exactly. Otherwise, she's in pain. It's like, and she doesn't get high. It's just yeah, it it's, just gets rid of the pain. It's like whoa. Yeah, it's it's a paradigm shift, and I always say that you know it, you know people have these preconceived mm -hmm. notions you know about what the user is you know, you know, how they're using it or what they're doing. It's just like, yeah. but these does, this doesn't stop this person from being qualified for that position to go no. do their job. They're not going to be on the job high. And if they are on the job high, then there's, then there's ramifications have, for then that. There's it's ramifications just, for that. Just like if anybody was to show up drunk or, um, inebriated or, or, anything, or, or yeah. any, anything like that. Yeah. So I, I definitely think, you know, you know, with transparency and clarity, yeah. you know, this is a great opportunity for us to, essentially open up for employers a, a whole pool of people that are yeah. now consuming marijuana on a day-to-day -day basis because what's happening is you have people who want to or need to smoke or consume marijuana in whatever form that they have whether it's you know the flower or edible but they're not consuming it because of the career that they're in you know mm -hmm. so for us it's like if we can alleviate that and say hey man you can consume what you're consuming and still apply for these positions that's fantastic. Or even, yeah. or even have the confidence to leave your position. So think about if you're in a position exactly. and you're consuming you're marijuana right. and, you know, you're trapped because you don't want to apply somewhere else under the assumption or, you know, not knowing yeah. what's out there when you can Absolutely. just stay in your job that you, you know, that you know you shouldn't be in any longer or anything like that. But it doesn't yeah. serve you to give Absolutely. up your medicine for, for, um, for marijuana. Awesome. So what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur since you've been an entrepreneur in multiple different industries? Uh, I would probably say the best thing is freedom and helping people. Oh, I love, I love, I love to help people. It's, you know, the, the one thing I've learned over my course of my business is you treat people good, you do good business. It comes right back to you. And Absolutely. I love, con I love connecting people. I love being a dot connector and it's, it's served me so well you know and the money just follows it's not oh, you know yeah. if, if you're if you're if, if you're someone that wants to get into entrepreneurship and you just i want the money i want the money i want the money don't do entrepreneurship like don't do don't it do oh my god don't, don't, don't do, do it. it don't do it you got to do what you love you know because it's really it's the way i see it it's a form of serving because it you're is. creating you're creating something that can help other people it's so it's like a selfless act you know and the money just mm -hmm. follows and then once you and i've made you know tons of money over the course of my career and it's like once you reach a certain level of making money you know you know what it feels like you know it doesn't it doesn't change anything yeah. you know but but it's like giving that add value to to do it because conversations 
those are the things that really make a difference mm -hmm. in learning. And, you know, I always tell people like, if you want to be an entrepreneur, make sure you love yourself because you're going to be spending a lot of time alone. Make sure you, <laughs> you it, seriously, you know, yeah. you love to learn. And you love to yeah. learn and you, you you really love to to get in and, and problem solve. Like I love to problem solve. I like yeah. to build things. I like to break things down. I like to yeah. re-engineer things. You know, that's just the way my mind works in, yeah. in, in, in entrepreneurship and building companies. And it's just, it's been the best out outcome for me. That's awesome. So what keeps you up at night with entrepreneurship? Oh, nothing. I sleep very well at night. There you go. <laughs> Not, nothing, <laughs> nothing, wor nothing worries you with entrepreneurship. <laughs> I um no I I sleep very well at night and, and I I think um what keeps me up I would probably see but then again it it kind of goes against everything that I stand for because like yeah. I believe it's in, to literally keep you up but what do you worry about I mean like what what's kind of like what's what's the scary part of being an entrepreneur I mean it's I would probably say not knowing but then mm -hmm. I lean but I lean into that. Isn't that like weird I, that it's both sides? It's both sides. Like not knowing is a good thing, but not knowing is a bad thing. It's, it's yeah, because like, you want to know your mind. Your mind wants to know. It wants to know this step at this turn. You know, you want to get this mm -hmm. result. But I think that's where. But the but all the magic happens when when you just kind of surrender and be like, oh, I can't control this. I can't. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't respond here, I'll just let this Absolutely. hang, and then I'll let it kind of come to me. And then when you start you know, letting things kind of unfold for you, it, 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 it then makes your job easier because I know for me, what makes me sleep well at night, knowing if I'm stressing, if I got anxiety or worry, that means I'm not even living in the right space. You know what I mean? Anxiety yeah. is when your mind's in the future, depression is when your mind's in the past. Ooh, so if I'm stressing yeah. out and I got anxiety, I'm, I know I'm not even living in the present moment. That's the only thing I can control. You got to recenter yourself, bring yourself back. You got, you got to. to. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. And it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, you think you can, you know, get here overnight, you know, but they say it takes, what, five years to become an yeah, overnight, overnight success. success. Overnight, 15 year success. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my joke was. Literally, over, overnight, 15 year success. And I'm still going. Yeah. So, and, so, what, and, so yeah, what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? The most important thing I carry with me, my Bible app, you know, I'm always in my yeah. Bible app um, all the time. That That's just something that keeps me grounded. You know, I just, just try to stay grounded. That's just it. Just stay grounded. It just meet everybody, really try to speak to everybody, be extremely present in those mm -hmm. conversations with people, because I feel like when you're doing that, it you can not only give value, but you're also receiving value. One who teaches Absolutely. learns, one who learns teaches. So I know at least that every person that I'm interacting with or engaging with, you know, either I'm teaching them something or I'm learning from them. So, right. you know, that that's something that, that kind of keeps pushing me forward. Love it, my friend. Love it. So where can people find you online? Where's your main watering hole? Is it LinkedIn? Let me guess. Yeah, yeah. Come, come see us. At, come visit me at LinkedIn. It's uh, just LinkedIn.com uh, backslash Damian Jordan. Um, we'll have, we'll have you, a link in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and come ch come check us out at finally.com. Yeah. We're the the only job platform for medical marijuana patients and cannabis consumers. Where transparent employers and job seekers meet. You know, where on our platform we just inclusively host employers who do not screen for marijuana or who have opted to drop marijuana screener from the drug testing panel. That way, if you're a medical marijuana patient or recreational consumer, you can apply for a job that you're qualified for and not have to worry about being screened for marijuana. That's fantastic. It, it, it's sad that it's needed, but it's good that it's needed that you're filling the gap. Damien, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Appreciate it. And we'll see everyone next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Seth. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, Please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network.
You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Keith Smith hosts a great podcast called The Fuel Podcast. Keith, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Fuel is all about the advertising business. It's like Mad Men for the years. Every show, I pick on a hot topic to discuss or interview a celebrity from the world of British and American advertising. We chat about all sorts of things, and I try and uncover the real person behind the image using just my powerful charm, incisive wit, and incredible humor. Humility. Awesome. Where can people subscribe? Wherever they go normally get their podcasts from Apple, Google, Spotify, the MPN website, or just visit my website at thefuelpodcast.com. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.